digital TV is available right now. And that means crisp, clean images, high definition programs, and a whole bunch of new channels like ABC3, GEM, 11, and 72. You can watch digital programs on a digital TV or by connecting a $50 set-top box to an old-style analog TV. But you need an antenna too, which connects to the TV or set-top box with a coaxial cable. You might call it an antenna cable. Now, if your existing antenna means your picture keeps freezing or breaking up into weird blocks, or you can't receive all the new channels, a new antenna can help improve things. There are basically three kinds of antennas suitable for digital TV reception. Indoor non-powered, indoor powered, and outdoor. The indoor models are ideal if you can't access the outside of your building or the main antenna outlets. And for best reception, they should be positioned as close to an external wall as possible. The simplest type is an indoor non-powered antenna, which can be as basic as a pair of classic rabbit ears. A powered indoor antenna adds what's called a gain control, which is a bunch of circuitry that amplifies weaker signals. This can be an especially useful feature if your house is built in a valley or low-lying area. Of course, rabbit ears on top of your ultra-thin LCD TV won't look very stylish, which is why there are now matching flat panel antennas. These have a super thin and light footprint that's easy to hide behind a bookshelf or even behind the TV itself. If you prefer your antennas to remain outdoors, that's fine. There are weatherproof models available too. These have the same functionality in a tough case that can withstand wind, rain, and even hail. And the compact design means your roof won't look like there's an ASIO base inside your house. If you already have a good traditional antenna on the roof, a signal amplifier might make the difference between freezes and breakups and a silky smooth picture. A signal amplifier is also useful if you want to split your antenna between two TV sets, say one in the lounge room and one in the bedroom. The amplifier doesn't need to be professionally installed, but you can put it up in the roof or attach it to new sockets in the wall if you want to keep things tidy. If your external antenna still can't get a clear digital picture, it's time to contact an antenna specialist who'll come and sort it out for you. It might cost a few hundred dollars, but the results will be well worth it. One more thing to be aware of, even the best antenna in the world can be let down by old or dodgy cables. Bad cables are subject to interference. What's the point of a good signal if you can't get it from the antenna to your TV? Quad shielded coax cable surrounds its copper core with layers of insulation, which protects the signal from interference. So let's recap. You can receive digital TV on an older style antenna, but a new aerial might pick up more channels. If you already get pretty good reception from your indoor antenna, but want to hide it away, choose an indoor flat panel antenna. If your TV reception is flaky or inconsistent, good some days, bad the next, choose an indoor powered antenna with signal gain control. If you don't want an antenna inside the house, or really need the extra elevation from your roof, choose an outdoor multi-direction antenna that's weather resistant and can be mounted on a pole for even better reception. And if you want to split your signal to two TVs, pick up a signal amplifier. You can pop it on a shelf, leave it on the floor, or even have it installed tidily out of sight cable to wall outlets. Finally, check your cables. Old or badly insulated cables can be affected by interference. Upgrade to quad shielded coax cable for a rock solid signal.